Hi guys, Samantha from Just Some Tutorials here, and today I'm going to show you a cool mica shift and image transfer earring set. So I'm going to be using some Cernet Steel, Cernet Silver, and some Prima Pearl White, since Cernet doesn't seem to have a pearl white. So what I'm going to do is so I've just got these pieces of silver and steel, and I just want to take a bit of this pearl white. I'd say maybe uh, two thirds uh, steel or silver and then one third per lot as a rough guesstimate I'd say. Okay, then mix that together, not, not the two of these together, mix that together and that together uh, to create the colours that we're going to be using. Okay, now we have these two, what I want to do is I want to take it and I want to form it into a triangle. And the reason I mixed it with a little bit of pearl white is because I wanted to lighten it without um, reducing the amount of mica particles there are in the clay. That's what gives it its metallic effect. If you mixed white into it, that would be reducing the amount of metallic particles there are in it. And that means that your mica shift is not going to be as nice. So if you want to make it lighter or darker, try to find some sort of metallic clay before adding an opaque okay. translucent clays work well you can use that as well anyway molded them into a triangle then just stick them together like that and create a skinner blend so just roll that through the plastic machine fold always fold it so you have one color on each side so all silver on that side all steel on that side fold it in. You can see if I fold it the wrong way, which would be this way, you get steel and silver in the same fold. It should always be silver or steel. And just continue folding till you get an even skinner blend. Okay, then once you're done, we're going to just gently mold this so that our um, cutter will fit the whole skinner blend. So you just want to fold it in half and press each side gently to just squish it down a bit then run it through your plaster machine and lengthen it like so then choose a texture stamp this is the texture stamp that I'm going to be using today Okay, I'm just going to pop that to the side quickly and this and this actually both of them I'm going to just grab some cornstarch and this will prevent our clay from sticking just gonna grab some cornstarch. I'm gonna dust my stamp. I actually had a bit too much on my brush there. Brush my stamp, blow it off. There we go. And that will have dusted our stamp off. Blow that off. You only want to dust one side. And then I'm just gonna get rid of this excess because we don't actually need that. I had a bit too much on my brush. Just brushing that off. You can see there's a lot of excess there. You need to make sure that you get off your tile. Okay. Then I'm going to place that down. And I'm just going to bring over a wet wipe, which I will use in a little while, but you can use it because it's um, because it is wet. You can very easily use it. Uh, to prevent the clay from sticking and then I'm just going to press that into my texture stamp and what I want to do is I want to lengthen the Skinner blend rather than um, so I'm instead of pushing it this way which would lengthen it which would make it wider I'm pushing it this way which is lengthening it which means that our Skinner blend is going to become too wide for um, our cutter that we're going to use in a little while and this also gives the back a nice texture using the wet wipe. And just give it a quick roll with a roller, just to even it out, get rid of any fingerprint grooves there might be. And there we go, you can see it has a nice texture on the back, and this should lift up pretty easily. You do need to be a little gentle with it. Don't yank it up, just gently peel it up, and you should have a nice clear texture. Pop that to the side, and then we need to just make sure that the front, the back, I mean, dries so that we can press it onto our um, tile. If it's a little too wet, it's not going to stick, and so it's not very useful. There we 
go. Got it stuck down. Just go trim up these edges. And then we're just going to gently shave our mica shift. Like so. And just carry on shaving off these bits so that you can get a nice clean mic shift. And keep in mind you can use any texture stamp for this. I thought this one was going to match quite well uh, with my image transfer that I'm going to use in a little while. Uh, so use a texture that works well with your image transfer. And just gently, slowly and methodically shave it off. There we go. Then just scrape up the little bits that are left. So you don't need those. And using a piece of plain printing paper, burnish this to remove any uh, raised spots that are left and just to, in general, give you a nice clean surface. And this will probably ruin the texture on the back, but that's fine. I can tend to that in a second. There we go. Nice, subtle texture. Lift that up. Bring over your paper again. Place it down. And I'm just going to fold that paper over. And I'm going to burnish it again so that both sides now will have a nice, clean uh, texture on the back. There we go. Then I just want to bring over the image transfers to show you what they look like. And so I'm going to be using this one and this one here. So we need to bring over a cutter that fits those well. Snugly, but not too snugly. See how many of these could I fit on? It's a little bit large. I think I'm probably going to go with this one and go with the two smaller ones here. This one and. Yeah. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to go with these two here. So the cutter I'm going to be using is this one, which is my largest in my small cutters cutter uh, section. So just press it in, give it a quick twist just to clean up those edges. Press there we go. I'm just gonna lift that up and we're gonna bake it just like that. You don't need to lift it off the paper, it's in the right position as it is. Now just bake that and then when they're done we can apply our image transfers. Okay, and once baked this should be what they look like. Now I want to give them a very light sand just to clear up the mic shift using some wet 800 grit sandpaper. And you can see there that's clearing up that mic shift beautifully. You don't need a lot, I start with an 800 generally because now the mic shift doesn't go very deep, and so I don't want to sand it off. I just want to clear it up. Then I'll move on to the 1,200, the 1,200, and this will just bring it up to a, a satin finish. And I'm going to be putting resin on these, so I don't need to sand them any more than this. There we go. Now I just want to wipe that off and show you the difference. The two. Okay. Now that one's wet, so let me just quickly wet this one with the wet wipe as well. You can see it's much clearer, has a slightly darker complexion in the uh, mic shifted areas. So I'm going to sand this one and then we can move on to the next step. There we go. Now we're ready to go. I've just been having second thoughts about these. 
don't know which one I should go with. I really like these ones as well and I think they will probably go quite nicely. And where's the cutter? They fit very well inside the cutter. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with these ones actually. Okay, so anyway, that was a bit of a change, but you're allowed to do that. So, this has a protective film on it. So let me show you that. Don't peel that off. Keep that on, because these are a little bit on the sticky side. I want you to take them, cut them out. Okay. It's one. It's two. Okay, and then I like to just trim it fairly close so that we have... nice clean edge. Don't trim too close, you don't need to trim it extremely close, I just like to trim it up so that it's not sitting in a big block shape like this. It helps me position it uh, better. So just trim that up, but be careful not to get your image transfer. Okay, there you go. Let's just remove all of that. Now we're going to take off our protective film. It's going to be a little sticky, so I would not touch it if I were you. And I want you to position it roughly in the middle. Like so. And I'll do the same for the other one. Grab that. And then make this so that it sits in the opposite direction. Set that down. Okay. Then grab some water. Grab my water bottle here. And just wet it. Sorry. Just leave it there, it should slide right off. You should be able to just brush this off and it should leave the transfer sitting there. So you might need to sit it there for a minute or two. There we go, this one's starting to come off. There we go. There's our butterfly. I just want to check if any was left behind. No. Got this one. And there's our other butterfly. And there we go, they look really quite pretty. Now, this should be not sticky at all. Gently dry that. Don't rub it. Once it has this image transfer on it, you cannot sand it or do anything of that sort. You don't want to rub it. It's fairly delicate. Uh, it will stick to the clay, but you just don't want to be, you don't want to be asking for problems. So just gently dry that up. I've even got a little air bubble there that I need to just gently press out. Okay, let's check this one, make sure it's sitting flat. And that's why you want to tap it down. Okay, then let those air dry. The metallic background should go matte before uh, when it is dry, and then we can apply our resin. And it looks really nice. I'm quite happy I chose those two. Then bring over a resin mitt, pop these two on it. There's something on the side that's causing it to bulge a bit. Because you want the resin mitt lying flat. There we go, got it. I want it to lie flat. Pop those on. And I'm going to be using Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss for this. Just pop that on a little bit at a time. Okay, that will be enough to start. 
Oh, I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. There we go. And you could change the background to make it uh, more interesting. Keep in mind that the image transfers are slightly translucent so you will be able to see the backing. So if you put it on a white backing it will make it appear brighter. If you uh, put it on a microchip you can see the tiny swirls behind it. And it will also make it slightly metallic. If you put it on a black background you're basically not going to be able to see it. So I would not advise putting it on black. So just keep in mind what backing you're using because it will directly affect your transfer. And I sell these transfers on my Etsy shop if you are interested. I've got a bunch of different designs and I plan to get some more in, in the future. Because they're really easy to use and they create a beautiful centerpiece. And I'm just making sure that I get a nice dome on this because uh, the magic gloss requires quite a bit of resin because it does form a beautiful dome, but it means that you do need to apply a bit more resin than what you usually would need to. Okay, and then once you're happy with it and you don't see it causing any trouble around the edges, pop that in the UV light for about half an hour. Okay, so once they're out of the UV light, we are going to drill them. So just position your drill in the spot you want and drill. Like so. I'm just putting out the hole. Then grab a jump ring and fit that through the hole. Just close that up. And now I want to attach one of these freshwater pearls to the top. It's not necessary, but it adds a nice accent to the piece. make a little rounded U loop attach your pearl snip off the top and repeat the loop Then grab a jump ring, open it up, attach your pearl, and then grab your ear wire, just opening that up, and attach that to the loop on the pearl. And there we go, there's your earring. So let me just bring up the other one that I finished ahead of time. And there are our two uh, earrings. Just bring you in. Okay, so that's basically it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have if you have any questions, let me know as well, and I'll try to answer those as quickly as possible. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron so that I can continue releasing free tutorials every single week. If you become a patron, you can get exclusive videos that are patron for patrons only, uh, and you can access all of the previous tutorials that I've posted on the platform, which is over 200 videos now. So please do consider becoming a patron. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.